It has happened again. For the second time in two weeks, fraudsters have attempted to steal a Toronto home. And I've been getting asked some questions on how this is even possible, how these guys are getting away with it, and what I can do to protect myself so it doesn't happen to me. So in this video, I'm gonna go over what happened. I'm gonna let you know what type of properties these fraudsters are targeting. And I'm gonna give you some advice on how to make sure this doesn't happen to you. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Dimitri Genitos with EXP Realty. I run a real estate group here in the greater Toronto area where we help our clients buy, sell, and invest in real estate. So if at any point you want to get in touch with myself, go ahead, click one of the links in the description, and you can book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. And if you're getting any value from these videos, go ahead, click the subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. Okay, so a very interesting story that has been making headlines lately. And if you've been keeping up with the news, you may have come across this story where there was a couple who originally has a home and lives in Toronto. They were working overseas for the past year. And while they were working overseas, some fraudsters actually broke into their home, got fake IDs, pretended to be them. They hired a real estate agent who then marketed and sold their property without them even knowing. Now, when they came back to their home several months later, they actually found that the new owners had taken possession and that their house had been sold without their knowledge. So this article came out on January 6th. Now, not even a week later, another article comes out about another fraud attempt, which now we know is actually related to the same people who did the fraud on the first one. But in this situation, they actually gave fraudulent information to the landlord who was looking to rent out their property. They got the property, and now that they had possession of it, they pretended, again, with fake documents to be the owner. They got another real estate agent to market it, and they actually did put it on MLS. And before the transaction actually closed, this one was caught, which is really really good. But this goes to show you that there are, you know, these fraudsters who are going around pretending to be sellers and selling their house without their knowledge. That begs to ask the question, how is this even possible? How is it possible for someone to steal your home without you even knowing? And, you know, the crazy part is, is that this is not the first time that this has happened. Um, it is making headlines because it is a little bit of a rare situation. And this fraudster has hit two homes in the past couple of weeks, which means there's a good chance that they're actively pursuing, you know, owners and impersonating them and trying to sell their homes without their knowledge. I want to start this off by reiterating that I do not advocate for these fraudsters. I'm making this video in order for you to protect yourself and not to give anybody ideas. Really what they did is that they got fake IDs and as a real estate agent, we are required to identify, you know, whoever we work with and fill out appropriate paperwork for that. Now, as a real estate agent, we only need to see one piece of government issued ID and it can be a scanned form. We don't need to physically hold it or see it. It can be sent to us via email, text, whatever. Now for the lawyers, they need to see two pieces of government issue ID and the fraudsters are typically going after homes that are free and clear. So they're really trying to avoid working with the banks, but at some point to get the money, they would need to set up either a fake bank account or some way to actually get the funds transferred to them and then into their pockets. So if we look at both scenarios here, in order for this to actually happen, the home has to be vacant or somehow in the control of the fraudsters. So in the first scenario, these homeowners were working overseas. The home was completely vacant. I'm not sure if they broke in or how they got access to the home, but they would have had to get access to the home one way or another. In the second scenario, they actually rented the property off of the landlord. So they pretended to be somebody else, gave fraud fraudulent information, rented the home, and then they therefore had possession. Once the fraudster has possession and control of the home, all they have to do is make a fake ID that matches the name of the owner. They've got to hire an unsuspecting realtor to list the home and market it. And this works pretty well in Toronto because the market typically does move quite fast here. So they can actually get a very quick sale before anybody suspects anything. So how did these guys get away with it? I'm not entirely sure, but let's go over a few of the types of properties that these fraudsters are targeting, and then we'll also go over how you can protect yourself from this. Starting off with who is at risk for these types of homes or what type of homes are these guys targeting? They are targeting vacant properties. Again, in order for them to pull this off, they need to have possession of the home so that they can hire a real estate agent, come in, you know, market it, have showings and actually properly sell it. Okay. So people who are at risk are anybody who's leaving their home vacant, whether you're going on a one or two month vacation or 
landlords. Landlords need to be very careful because they are letting a stranger rent their property. And if that stranger is a fraudster, you could find yourself in this situation. So what can we do in order to prevent this? If you are going on a vacation where your home will be vacant for an extended period of time, even a month or two, because like I said, in Toronto, the market moves pretty quick and you only need a little period of time in order for them to have a firm sale, Make sure somebody is monitoring your property, whether it's a neighbor, whether it's someone just checking in on it regularly to make sure that people are not going in and out, that there's not any sort of unusual activity. Having a security system or some sort of system that monitors the doors opening and closing would also help with this. And for the landlord side of things, it's really important that either the landlord and or the real estate agent do their proper thorough background check on any prospective tenant in order to make sure that they are exactly who they say they are. This involves you going past the personal references, which mean nothing. You got to pull back as big of employment history as possible. Call every single employer and make sure that all these stories add up. Go back as far in their renting history as possible. Get as many landlords that they've dealt with. Call all of them. Make sure that the names of the landlords match up on the public records as the owner of that home and just do everything you can. Check their social media profiles because if we look at the second case, case, if we actually did a thorough investigation, they actually did find some errors in the fraudulent information that the tenant provided, and this could have been avoided. Also, make sure that you have title insurance when you buy your home. Title insurance is what is going to protect you from situations like this. So in the first situation where the home actually was sold and closed, title insurance should step in and compensate the affected parties for the damages that were caused. Okay, Title insurance is very cheap. It's a one-time fee. It's not every month like home insurance. This happens at the closing of your home through the lawyers. So when you're closing on a home, make sure you talk to your lawyer and ask them to make sure that you have title insurance on it. It's pretty cheap. It's about a dollar for every thousand dollars of the purchase price. So if it's a $500,000 home, it's going to be about $500 for title insurance. If it's a million dollars, it's going to be about a thousand dollars. And like I said, one-time fee protects you from any situation that really affects the title of the property. So even in a situation where maybe they didn't sell your home, but they, you know, somehow got, you know, your uh, important information, they pretended to be you and they refinanced the home through the banks without you knowing and pulled out the cash title insurance should help cover this. And finally, and this is just my opinion, I feel that there should be some stricter regulations for realtors and lawyers when it comes to identifying their potential clients. I think that it should be mandatory for us to actually take photos of us holding the physical ID and submitting that to our office for records. And that shows that we've actually looked at their physical ID with them present, and we've done everything in our power to verify that that person is exactly who they say they are. Now, if they can come up with you know a fraud an ID uh, that's that's physically there and that gets by everybody, well then, you know, we've done our due diligence at the very least, but I think it's just too easy to make fake documents that could be sent over text or email. I'm curious to hear you guys' thoughts about this story in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of the regulations in regards to identifying potential clients and make sure you follow what I said uh, in order to help protect yourself from it. Like I said, it's a very rare situation that this happens, but it is one that you should be aware of and protect yourself from. So, um, Uh, Like I said earlier, guys, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you on the next video.